Hey guys, welcome to the Bad Penny channel and today we're going to be looking at how tax works. So remember guys, what I'm doing right now is a very nice series whereby I'm going to be talking about how things work in terms of financial um, situations, business situations, whatever the case may be. So you're more than welcome to comment down below and let me know what you would like me to work on as I'll be doing many, many ideas as much as possible. And I'll also appreciate to know exactly what you guys might be directly interested in that I could help you guys out on. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So in this video, we'll be looking at the South African tax system in terms of individuals and how it's applied because many people don't really understand how their tax actually works how they end up paying what they pay and therefore this video helps you guys to actually see how those taxes are determined and whether you can see maybe you can plan around it and pay a maybe slightly more efficient amount rather than just paying something you know without even considering your options so hope this video helps guys let's get into it Please note, this is not advice for any one specific tax issue, but if you may need assistance with tax issues, please contact us on the details available below in the description box. Now, your income tax is regarded as gross income. This is all the income you receive from South African and worldwide sources. So wherever you make money in terms of the South African system, you, so long as you're a South African tax resident, you are liable to pay income on the money that you make locally as well as worldwide. This could be your salary, the interest income you earn from investments, dividends from your other investments in terms of local companies and foreign companies, rental income where you have rental units and people are paying you income. So that income is also part of your gross income and all other income that you get. The most important thing to realize there is whatever that you earn, you have to declare it. It has to be placed into your declaration in terms of your income tax calculation. Also, non-cash income or benefits, this is what we call fringe benefits like pension and medical aid contributions from your employer. So some people can be lucky enough that they have medical aid or a pension fund and this pension fund, you as an employee you contribute to it and in some cases your employer also contributes the equal amount that you contribute so that portion from the employer is also an income or a fringe benefit so that benefit needs to be also quantified and calculated into your income tax calculation all of this results into what is called a gross income next what you will consider is exempt income so exempt income is the income that starts to say okay this income you can take it away we will not be adding it in terms of putting together your tax calculation this will be your dividends specifically local dividends or dividends from local companies um, can also differentiate between jse as well as um, your private companies that are just you know not listed on the jse whatever the case may be SARS is promoting you to invest into these type of businesses of course it's a very oversimplified situation here yeah? but in essence if you invest locally there are tax benefits attached to that in terms of interest income you are there's a certain threshold that you are allowed in terms of this threshold the minute you or the moment you actually exceed it then whatever excess in terms of in, interest income that you've owned earned that will be the amount that will be taxed at the end of the day the purpose of exempt income there's there's a few of them at the end of the day these is to help you to lower the taxable income that you're going to end up calculating because it will be effectively lessening your gross income so whatever that will be applicable there that's what will be taken away from the gross income in terms of the exempt income at this point you will have all your income considered and next we'll be looking at the deductions now remember the disadvantage of being an employee or an individual doing your tax return is that your deductions are highly highly limited at the end of the day when i say limited i mean even if you are paying certain expenses to do your job better or to do your job in general you're still not allowed to get those deductions so let's look at those limited deductions that are allowed 
they have retirement contributions which amount to or which can be your pension retirement and provident contributions made by the taxpayer remember if these contributions are not made by you but they're made by someone else this is not a expense to you it's more of an income slash fringe benefit so it will be considered as an income but if they are made by you they are contributions or expenses out of your pocket and therefore SARS will allow you to deduct furthermore note that for individual deductions are limited you cannot set off office expenses rent paid bond payments and so on even if it is related to income generating activities however there are exceptions if you are a sole entrepreneur or independent contractor however this will be looked at on another video should you guys be interested in it remember like the video comment down below and let me know what you guys are interested in once you've considered the limited deductions then you will have the taxable income this is the amount you use to calculate your tax based on the tax table for the year of assessment in other words a tax year begins on the 1st of march until the last day of february the following year for example the 2021 financial year begins from 1st march 2020 up until 28 february 2021 therefore you will use the 2021 tax table to calculate the tax for the given period or if this is a different year you will use that year's tax table to calculate the tax for that given period here is an example of the 2021 tax table for individuals as you can see the taxable income is the amount you apply in other words if your taxable income is below 205 thousand and nine hundred then you would focus on the first line and apply accordingly if you have a taxable income of 1.6 million then you would apply the last calculation that is on the table once you have applied the tax table then you would have the tax as per tax table now medical aid contributions will be calculated and deducted accordingly Lastly, rebates are deducted. These are amounts declared by Treasury slash government and given as a relief to complying taxpayers. So in terms of where you are with your tax calculation after deducting your medical aid expenses, these are further deductions that will be applied, which effectively helps with paying the tax. There are three rebates you can get based on your age. Please note these vary from year to year. The rebates are as follows if you are under the age of 65 years old you will get 14,958 this is called the primary rebate if you are between 65 and 75 years old you will get the primary rebate plus 23,157 this is the secondary rebate and lastly if you are older than 75 years old you will get the primary and secondary rebate plus 25,893. This is the tertiary rebate. Total rebates receivable per level are for primary, you're looking at 14,958, secondary, you're looking at 38,115, and tertiary, you're looking at 64,008. This shows it pays to be productive in your old age. At this point, you would have set off the applicable rebate and arrived at your subtotal. If your employer has been appropriately deducting pays earned from your salary per month, the amounts deducted will appear in the total at this point. And this will be set off against your subtotal. Then you will arrive at the income tax payable or refundable. Now, at this point, it is important to note that the difference between tax payable and tax refundable. If tax is payable, that means you owe SARX money. And if it is refundable, that means SARX owes you money. Also note that for you to receive a refund, it is because you overpaid tax over the months leading to the end of the financial year. You don't get a refund if you don't prepay taxes. So remember guys, there is no money from Mahala. You don't just declare and think you get money simply because you just get money. 
that money has been prepaid it comes from somewhere and you're just merely getting a refund for being a good tax citizen in terms of how you manage your tax affairs remember guys at the end of the day south is not a bank south is out there to really service the needs of the people the needs of the country as a whole and the more tax that we are able to pay in the rightful manner in a just and legal manner it's the best situation for everybody because then we live in a better country and things just go for the better hope guys you learned something thanks for watching guys please remember to subscribe and comment down below on your thoughts and feedback we really appreciate it for tax and accounting advice or work please contact us on the links and contact details below we look forward to working with you and that thanks for watching guys hope you learned something see you on the next one Thank you.